Good morning. It is early Tuesday morning here, still dark outside, and I am up and ready to go. Today I have planned hitting three thrift stores and seeing what I can film, how much I can film to bring you guys along with me, show you what crazy good stuff I'm finding here in Pennsylvania. I know many of you have commented on my prior videos how good the prices are at my stores, and I am finding that fairly true. Now there are a few stores that tend to price higher and run sales, so I make sure I hit those stores on sale days. I am almost always the first one in the door. I like to see what they have out on the shelves. I'm very excited to find treasure and hoping to take you along with me today. I know many of you like just seeing what's out there, what's in my state, and what I choose to pick up and why. So I will try to film as much as I can and show you where these stores are located so that if you're ever in Pennsylvania, if you ever vacation here or have a reason to come here, you can make a, a mental note or jot down what stores you're seeing that you liked. So so let's get started. Let's hit the road. Please like and subscribe and we will see what treasure we come home with today. was number five on my stop the other day. I actually headed out quite early in the morning and worked my way all the way up north to this shop. This store reuse it, I believe is a chain of stores and it is one of the biggest, if not the biggest thrift store that I go to. This place is huge and so clean and set up well. Now the clothing there, I don't find a lot that leaves enough room to make profit, but the hard goods are fairly good here. The staff that works here is quite extensive. There are a lot of people that volunteer at this store and the research that's put into their items is quite extensive. But having said that, there is a lot of inventory. So sometimes you can find amazing finds. One time I found a pair of leather shoes. I don't remember the brand and they had the flags of the world all over them. Those shoes brought, if I remember correctly, close to $100. I have also purchased a full rack, a uh, circular rack of dresses and I asked the manager if she would take $6 a dress. They were marked at $8 and she said yes and I sold all of those dresses. I believe that pickup was about 60 They were a certain type of dress that I really don't want to disclose because I still like to look for that style of dress, but this is where I got it. I'm going to take you along. You're going to be amazed at this store and if you're ever in New Holland, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania, you definitely want to put this shop on your list. So let's get started and I'll give you the tour. So one of the first rooms that you come into is housewares, hard goods. Um, they have such an extensive amount of hard goods, it's unbelievable. This is all donated by the local community. This thrift store serves many different charities and each month, I believe, the proceeds from this store is given to a certain local charity. So I'll try to include that list to show you where the money from this store goes. Now, like I said, quite a few things are marked up in my opinion, <laughs> maybe I'm just spoiled, but there is still a vast amount of items that you can find for a very good profit, you know, and you can flip for a profit. So when I have time, I come to this store. This is not a shop that you're going to run in and out of five minutes and pick things up. This is very well organized. The inventory is very well marked and um, labeled, and the staff here generally knows what they have. I'm not going to say they list things or price things at eBay prices, but it's fairly close to an internet price. Once in a while you can find things that have been marked down and really good to know they also have a bin section. Their bins are wooden crates and I will show you that later on in the video. So as you can see I'm just looking at different items. Even if you just want to parouse and, you know, get a cart and stroll through, get a cup of coffee, this place is the place to come. Very entertaining, really beautiful. Here I was drawn to looking at these polka dot plates, really pretty, and I turned them over. Kate Spade, they wanted $6 a plate. Now I did not purchase these, but uh, really pretty. And everything generally is in very nice condition. I haven't seen too many chipped things, dirty things, 
the clothing is generally very nicely presented. You'll see as the video goes along what I'm talking about. Here I started looking at a Game of Thrones mug uh, put out by HBO. It was $5. I did put it in my cart originally uh, with the thought of looking it up, and I did look it up, and they went for between 10 and 12 so I wound up putting that mug back. I think this store is set up more like a boutique rather than a thrift store. I've never seen not only such a big thrift store, but such an organized thrift store. They take a lot of pride in the presentation, as you can see. This next plate caught my attention, just beautiful. It did have a small marking on the back, but I didn't take time to look it up. I'm trying not to pick up too many single plates, famous last words. If you notice, a lot of their display stands are made out of wood, and I believe it's local uh, craftsmen that built the displays for this store. Lots of glassware. I have probably picked up more clothing um, in the recent years from this store rather than hard goods, and I'm not sure why that's happening. I don't know if I'm not getting there often enough. Like I said, this is about, I'm going to say about 45 minutes from my house, and this store takes a lot of time. And you know me, I'm a crazy person running up and down the aisles, and when you come in this store, they're playing really soft music. <laughs> it's really um, peaceful, I'll put it that way. And most days, I am not. So that's the staircase that's going to go upstairs. We're going to go up there later. I took a look at this little teapot. Recently, I sold a teapot that I had to show to you guys. And the buyer was really thrilled. It was a kitty cat. Now, this time, I believe this teapot did have a chip. And they wanted $8 for it. So that was quite a large chip. I'm wondering if that happened after it was displayed and the employees didn't realize that it was chipped. Here's a grouping of salt and pepper shakers. Very fun to look at. I don't sell a lot of salt and pepper shakers. No, really, I don't. <laughs> I don't know if you guys believe anything I say anymore. Little caboose trains. I thought these were especially good. They were $3 a piece, but not finely painted enough. I think it was just maybe a little ceramic shop project. I could be wrong about that. I thought this bowl was beautiful. And now we're turning a corner. They have a lot of uh, display areas. Everything, pretty much everything is for sale, but they use all of the inventory to really, you know, display it nice. And now we're on to clothing. Here I'm stopping to look at a quilt. You know me, I love to pick up quilts. And I figured this would be out of my price range and sure enough it is at $75. So I won't show you a lot of individual pieces. Like I said, I really wanted to show this thrift store 
and when a thrift store is this size I'm not able to look at the amount of inventory they have or even make a dent in it and film so I wanted to give you guys an idea here we have some Mennonite Amish dresses I'm gonna say these are Mennonite eight dollars a piece which Mennonite dresses generally sell between 20 and 30 depending on the workmanship so there is a little room for profit but uh, not quite enough at this price. Here I'm showing you the apron. This is called the apron to the dress. And I have found Amish and Mennonite dresses in beautiful prints. They don't always dress, you know, with such a plain pattern as you would think. Some of the dresses are quite beautiful. Not a lot of ornamentation though. Here we're just looking at skirts. I'm gonna say the vast majority of the brands that they carry are real lower end bread and butter. And I believe they charge around $5 a skirt. As you can tell, the store is really clean and really organized. Now, belts at $4 each, I feel is overpriced. I don't like to pay more than maybe a dollar or two for a belt. Here we are coming to the next department. This is the LuLaRoe department. So for anybody who still loves LuLaRoe, they have a whole department of it. And who didn't see this coming? I feel very bad for the people that are selling this, that the men and women who have signed up as representatives for this company, I see this stuff pouring into the thrift stores and they can't get rid of it. Now I've heard it's very comfortable clothing. I've never worn it before, but I don't know that the longevity of the item was there. I don't think it was a high quality brand, but I did want to show that last department. I believe this is just dresses. And now we are on to shoes. These are women's shoes. Again, notice the display rack. This is all built. So really a sweet shop and very fun. It's a real um, country vibe to it. $8 for boots is not horrible. But like I said, this day I was more into filming and trying to show you guys what was here. I thought these were very fun. <laughs> Like I said, the staff here is very well educated in what they have. I don't see them miss too much. I think they are checking everything on the internet to see you know, what a fair price for them to sell the items for, and they do quite well. Now, I don't quite know if the bin system that they have going on upstairs are items that they have not been able to move or if they're just if they just have so much that they're putting some things into the bins I did wind up purchasing a jacket I feel I got a very good deal and their bins upstairs are 50 cents a piece that's my kind of price structure look how organized this is amazing they must have some volunteer staff Here are some fake copy Hummels. Look at the poor painting job on these. Ugh, horrible. <laughs> they also put on the color tag of the week. They'll run a sale. So I believe when I went, yellow tag was 50% off. I don't happen to know the square footage of this store, but this store has to be tens of thousands of a square foot big, if I said that correct. Really huge. To have a whole department of just tops, amazing. And now we're 
we're going to go to another whole area that has things like arts and crafts, fabric, um, more hard goods as you can tell. Now here I did see a few good pieces, a few vases, but like I said, I'll go back another day to do my real shopping. With a store this big, pushing a cart, you know, trying to be, you know, not really bold about filming in front of everybody, I had to curtail my shopping a little bit. Thought that piece was ugly, borderline interesting. <laughs> This whole area was ribbon, uh, gift wrap, and scrapbooking, I believe. More arts and crafts. They have a Christmas department all year long. I thought this piece was pretty unique. I don't care for the way the person painted it, but that was a lot of work that went into this mold. And I'm hoping they show the price. What do we see there? $5. So if that would have been painted nicer, that would have um, you know, caught my attention more, but I wanted to see what they were charging for that large piece. a very common mold of this angel here. And guys, this store is this organized all the time. I don't know if they have staff going around straightening 24-7. I have never seen such an organized thrift store. Christmas gift wrap. I believe that was Christmas crafts. <laughs> More Christmas. Like who has a whole shelf for Christmas teddy bears? Crazy. This starts where they keep the artwork. I have bought a few pieces uh, from these bins, I'm gonna call them. Really pretty. And I feel their artwork is fairly priced most of the time, the, the items I've found. This piece here caught my attention. I was trying to feel if it was, you know, had texture, which usually means that it's not a print, that it is painted. And I brought this down to take a look at it. There was something about that I liked. It could be a very common print and I just didn't realize it, but I'm trying to learn more and more about art. Here I'm looking at the back of the canvas. If you don't watch um, a woman named Dr. Lori on the internet, you want to watch her. She is, in my opinion, one of the best authorities on pricing antiques, artwork, and I watch as much of her as I can. Someday I hope to go to one of her live shows. She does the type of shows where you can bring items and get them uh, valued. Here we had some student artwork, somebody who enjoyed uh, drawing and painting race cars. And we had posters.
They've created the whole book department like almost like a library where you can sit, look at artwork, read a book. They really encourage this in this store. I kind of like the expression on Jesus's face there. I've never seen that painting. And now I'm gonna bring you upstairs. I think I enjoy shopping upstairs more than I do downstairs. Downstairs on the ground floor can be overwhelming, but upstairs is really cool furniture. Um, like I said, the bins. So come on upstairs with me and I'll show you what was up here this day. This couch was stunning. And I thought $1.95 was a very fair price for it. That's called a camelback sofa, I believe. Really beautiful. It'd be a shame to, you know, some people don't like painting wood, but I would paint that wood and, um, and have it recovered, you know, reupholstered if I was going to buy that. I'd probably do a charcoal gray with a painted wood. I know there's probably a collective gasp throughout the antique community. <laughs> Look how pretty this is. Very Pinteresty. Good job, ladies. So when you first walk in upstairs, they do have some knickknacks and things like that. Um, this over to the right is small appliances. And then when you come up this ramp, notice the brass handrails. This is where they keep the antique furniture. It's a baby cradle. A lot of the vintage and antique beds are a full size. I don't know that queen size was that popular. It's an old ironing board, very cool. This was a genuine uh, antique uh, marriage certificate. I didn't think $8 was bad. It did have slight damage, but that's to be expected with a lot of ephemera, you know, that's that age. I believe this was the vintage baby section or things that you could use in a nursery. I thought that was quite cool. I wasn't sure if that was a dress or if it was, I guess it was a gown because they had some wedding gowns. I have a tendency to love these enamel topped uh, kitchen tables. My grandmother had one and I remember as a small child sitting at one in Brooklyn. It was wonderful. I believe it had red naugahyde seats. What are these carriages called? Is that called a pram? I think I remember hearing that term somewhere. Again, this table caught my attention. This was beautiful. And they wanted, what was that, 125? I videoed it so quick I didn't see. It did have damage on the side. The enamel had a chip and then looked like somebody had um, maybe buffed it out. Quite beautiful. This next apartment is more contemporary furniture. Now they do have some antiques, but it's not as old in age as what we just saw. So $219, I felt that was a little high for the condition of this dresser. I 
I believe this is called East Lake. That's the style. Here's a whole tree here. Now I don't believe these were the original knobs to this dresser. I liked this roll top, or I forget what that's called, the top with the bone on it. Trying to open this standard. I don't know if somebody glued that down or I was just having a really hard time with it with one hand. I couldn't get that open. Could have been stuck. You know, the wood might have swelled. But I thought that was beautiful. This Chinese cabinet was beautiful. I like the way the edges are curved up. That might be called empire style. I'm, I'm probably wrong about that. There's a name to when that edge curls up. And this next shot was my favorite part. <laughs> I'm definitely getting back there soon. This is their bin system. 50 cent clothing. Now I don't know that I'm gonna find a lot of high-end names in this bin, in these bins, there were a few of them, but I wouldn't mind digging through this. Like I said, the store is, the store is very clean and I don't think I would feel gross digging through these bins. Not that I don't dig through the regular bins too, I do. This denim jacket is the jacket that I purchased for 50 cents vintage wool rich with a blanket lining. Yes, please. Had a leather collar. I'm not sure what year this is from, but this is a nice find for 50 cents. Did have some wear and missing a button on the cuff. Hopefully I'll be able to um, attach a button, you know, find an extra button. But look at that blanket lining, really nice. Now, some jackets like this will have 100% uh, wool, uh, it's actually itchy, blanket lining. This one was more like fleece, so not quite as good as the vintage, I think they're Pendletons that have the wool blanket lining. But I felt this was desirable, and I'm expecting comps. I really haven't checked it thoroughly, but I imagine this will bring between $30 and $40. So I said yes to this. This next still photo is a display that they have that lets you know where your money goes. I love that idea. So many times thrifting in these type of stores, I question, you know, that they're getting most of their inventory for free. And I want to know that me spending great amount of money in this store, what it's going to. I really love this store. I think they really have the right attitude, good heart. And like I said, put a lot of work into this store. Here's another still shot of what the bins room or the bins department looks like. You can see somebody built all of those bins. This is something super interesting to me. This was bolts of material. Yes, please. A lot of these were beautiful quality and I love this idea. So I will probably go back. A lot of these rolls or bolts were like four or five dollars. Here I'm showing a whole department for children. Make children feel very welcome. Just amazing. Here's a whole department for the gentlemen. All kinds of electronics and tools. I just wanted to show that the volunteers made a banner to welcome you into this area. They took material fabric and made this banner flag. I mean, who does this? Look how pretty that is. It's a great idea too for a party. If you're gonna have a party, it's a great way to make an inexpensive celebration piece. Here again, just a still shot of how pretty things are set up. And I'll leave you with the store hours for this store. Like I said, you really wanna allow yourself plenty of time to go through this store. You're gonna be shocked. I didn't even show half of what this store entails. So hope you enjoyed this tour. And just know that when I'm not filming, I am so back in this store filling my cart. So go out and get what's yours. <music>